Hi, welcome. We are going to go back and continue with the, uh, the probabilistic models for discriminative classification. And now we're going to continue with the Bayesian logistic regression. So we, what we did before is that we have some shape and we're interested in the parameters, but we're just going and, and taking estimates of each parameter, right? But when, what happened when we don't want only the, the parameter, we, we also want to have some uncertainty about them, okay? And in this case, um, what would it be when we don't, um, when we don't know how to compute those, right? Like what happens when we don't have the conjugate priors to do that, that particular estimation? So in that case, uh, one way of solving for those problems is to use Laplace approximation. And this Laplace approximation is just introducing some energy function for for our uh, distribution of the parameters. So basically we just have the exponential form of the negative of the energy. And this energy is just some function that we decide to that to model the, the shape of, of, of the parameters. So the energy of, of how likely these, these parameters are. Um, and in general, it should be this joint, the log of this joint distribution, but if we don't know it, we can just assume it and, and approximate it. And our Z as always is just the partition function. And this is just the likelihood of the data. Okay. And normally what we do uh, as always is just take this energy function and then we just approximate it using the second order uh, Taylor series. And we do as we did in the in the previous uh, example. We just go and, and do the expansion of this and then evaluate for the different uh, uh, points in, of theta. So in this case, our G ends up as the gradient of this energy function value in, in theta star. And our Haitian becomes just the second derivative also of the energy function value on, on, on theta star two. And what we, what we will have here is uh, that if this theta star is the mode of, uh, of the gradient of my, uh, of my distribution, then the gradient in theta star should be zero. And from there, I can actually do some estimate of my distribution. And what I will have is that this joint is the energy, is the, the exponential of this energy function times the, the exponential of, of, my, of my Haitian since the gradient is zero, right? So I just remove it from, from there. And my uh, conditional of theta with respect of the data is uh, one half of my, of my joint. And this is actually proportional to some normal. So we just assume normality in this case. We assume that this parameter is going to be uh, a normal with respect of the, um, uh, with a mean in my optimal parameter and with an spread equal to my Haitian. So this helps me to, to, to solve this. And my partition function then is nothing else but the energy value in that particular mode that I assume and my uh, covariance matrix is just the, the Haitian. So this actually helps me to, to simplify the whole, the whole issue that we have. Um, from here, we can derive the evasion information criterion that help us to, to, to solve for a, particular, for a particular value, right? So what we want to do is, as, as always, we want to maximize the likelihood of the data. And this is basically an approximation of the data given my theta times the prior, right? Plus some some constant, the, the normalization, the yeah, the normalization constant over here. And what we can assume is that we will have some uniform priors over theta. That means like my prior of theta is going to be approximately one. And since this is uh, non-informative, then we can just drop this this logarithm, and then we can just evaluate on some estimator. Okay, so instead of computing this uh, theta star, we just can get, for instance, the maximum likelihood estimation. And then use that estimator as, as a plug-in distribution into the solution over here. So if we just do that and approximate again, we drop this particular prior over here and we just end up with the logarithm of h and this logarithm of the likelihood. And now instead of having 
that uh, that distribution value on, on theta star we have it on the theta uh, hat that is our estimator okay now the issue is how do we solve for this particular log of of the of the Hessian right if we don't have it so we can just assume some Occam factor or the model complexity right so we just want to get the model that is simpler and one way of doing it is just assume some shape you know let's assume some shape of h and that h will be the same for everything so my 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 overall h is going to be just the sum of these the smaller ones um and this is uh this hi is just basically just the second derivative of my log likelihood of of p of the data given my 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 theta okay so if I just make again this hi some h uh, h hat it's just an approximator of this what I will have is my log of this h is nothing else but some it is going to be the log of this um, hi that is I just sum n times so it's n h uh, hat and I can just split this right so I can just take it out and it's going to be n times the dimension of that times the h, uh, the determinant of the h uh, hat. Now, if n is much, much bigger than, than, than my dimension, what will happen is that this term will dominate this logarithm, okay? And then I can do another approximation and I can just drop this term again. So basically what I will have is that my p of d uh, is just my likelihood of, of the data given my uh, estimator of the of the parameter minus this term that just depends on the number of data and this is just my logistic regression right so I can just apply my logistic regression and then just simply remove this this term over here and this is one of the of the ways of, of doing this 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 approximation right and what, what will happen is that we end up with this um, kind of Gaussian way of, of approximating my, my, my regression, right? So if we have, for instance, uh, a Gaussian approximation, what will happen is that I will assume a Gaussian as my prior for the parameters. And in this case, we just assume simply that this Gaussian is centered in zero and that we have some spread function, uh, sorry, and a spread uh, matrix. And since this is Gaussian, we can assume that the likelihood is also Gaussian uh, with some estimator, right? And this estimator can be the minimum uh, parameter that just uh, minimizes our energy over here. And this, uh, again, energy is just nothing else but the, the posterior that we have over here. Um, the data given the parameter times the prior, okay? And Hessian is nothing else but these the secondary derivative of this thing value in W K, and we can use it. And our uh, posterior predictive is uh, just the marginalization of the likelihood, right? Like we want to compute the likelihood given x, a uh, sample x, and our data. And what we do is like we do the likelihood of y given x and the parameter. But our parameter comes from the posterior of these uh, of giving the data right and then we just marginalize for every possible w the problem here is that this this material is intractable so we can just simply do as we did before and we do a plug-in approximation so basically we just take the probability of y equal to one given our sample and our data and this is just the expect instead of doing it with respect of the whole data we just do it with respect of the expected value of my parameter okay and this expectation can be just the posterior mean, okay? We just take the expected uh, W of the posterior of W given the data. Another option is to do some Monte Carlo approximation. Basically, you just go and take a lot of samples and then just from those samples, uh, we just push these samples inside of the, of the sigmoid and just average those responses, okay? So this is basically what you have to do in the first uh, project over here. Um, another way of doing this is with some probability approximation basically you just assume that this is a uh, gaussian but this gaussian is not um distributed with respect of the spread that we had before but some other uh, scatter matrix over here 
And we do as we did before, we just need to compute the marginalization of this function, but it's simplified because we just push the um, uh, this value over here of my uh, of my particular function uh, of the sigmoid, uh, my normal, okay? And this, since they have a similar shape, we can assume that we can approximate them together. For instance, if I assume that this A is my WT, uh, w transpose t that we are using as, as the way of measuring the likelihood of the values, right? And then my mean is just going to be uh, this um, sample mean from the from from my normal. And then I can compute that my variance from this these over here and my variance also ends up as um, a parameter that depends on only the, the, the scatter matrix that I have before. Um, it is called this profit approximation because the profit is, is this function over here. And the profit just is the summation of, of a normal within a given range from minus infinity up to A. So I'm just doing the, the cumulant of this normal distribution. And the thing is like if we select the parameters in a particular way, we can see that this uh, approximation has the same shape as the profit. So in, in general, my profit is just this, um, this integral over here of, of lambda A times the normal, and this has a closed form, okay? This has the same shape as the profit just shifted within the parameters. So if I now make my sigmoid that I had at the beginning, right, my sigmoid in here, I just want to go back and take this sigmoid approximation, and instead of calling it the sigmoid, I'm just going to approximate it with the with the profit. I can go back and just plug this sigmoid in here. So basically, I'm going to just compute the the profit solution instead of 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 doing the whole integral. This is not the same thing. Like it is not going to 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 be a sigmoid when you do the the approximation. But since both uh, functions have a similar shape, we can just take advantage of that and, and use it. Um, and this is the, the same solution with lambda is equal to p over 8, okay? So these, these are ways of approximating um, the discriminative, discriminative classifiers when you have more complex ways of doing the, uh, of doing the this learning part, okay?